Welcome, welcome back to Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Jermaine, aka Kryptonite, interviews another creator in regards to their creative journey. We're going to talk about their triumphs, their wins, their losses, words of advice, all that wonderful stuff that you don't get during the day-to-day of a streamer. Tonight, I have a special guest. She has a passion for cosplay, gaming, video game design, and lore, Japanese culture and language, and women in the gaming industry. She is working towards being a creative narrator in the gaming industry while improving on her Japanese skills. I'd like to introduce my guest for tonight, Callista. Callie, how are you doing tonight? Hi. <laughs> I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little tongue tied, but I'm, I'm good. So we're here. I want to thank you first and foremost. Thank you for being a guest on my podcast. I appreciate it. Of course. Absolutely. Let the people know, what are you doing nowadays for your content? What's your creative outlook look like right now? Oh, geez. I'm actually trying a few different things. Mm-hmm. So, um, as you know, I'm a cosplayer, so I'm cosplaying all the things I wanted to do when I was a much younger girl. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've been doing that officially since 2020, and that's still been going. I'm a Twitch streamer. Mm -hmm. That's happened, I don't know, maybe 2018. It's been a while. My memory isn't the greatest. (laughs) And I recently started to re-explore YouTube because I've actually done it through several different things. Okay. Um, like a girlfriend and I, we had a, a fashion blog and we were also doing like YouTube videos back in the day. Um, but that kind of like fell off to the side. And so now I picked up YouTube again. However, it's mostly just like my stream VODs, but I'm working on additional mm-hmm. content. I can't tell you all the details. You know, I got to <laughs> keep it in my secret notebook. Um, yeah, secret, secret. I like it. <laughs> and then um, I am also thinking about getting back into blogging because I used to be a blogger back in the day. I know a lot of people are on TikTok and stuff, Instagram and things like that, but I used to be a blogger and I'm like really considering going back to that. That's awesome. Now, it's the blog. Is it going to be only uh, you writing a bunch of entries or is it going to be video? What's it going to look like? Or have you even got that far yet? I haven't gotten that far yet, but I do have a passion for writing and um, I want to explore that avenue or re-explore that avenue because back in the day, blogging was like a really big thing. I don't know if I'm aging myself. If you know, you know. Nah, that's nah, what I gotta say. Nah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a passion for writing. It's something that I developed when I was like much younger. So I really want to keep up with that. That's awesome. I like that. Um, you know what? I was just I was thinking about this. While we started as streamers, I feel like a lot of us have so many other creative outlets that we need to tap into. Like, I remember that you wrote, but uh I didn't know you were a blogger, so that, um, that's news to me. Yeah, that's like a part of me. I don't want to say I keep hitting. It's just a part of me that I don't mention anymore, especially how what society has changed into, I don't know, f- one minute, 20 second, 30 second videos on mm-hmm. TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, are people like going to read this? But I'm just like, you know what? You never know. You might as well just go ahead and try it and see what happens. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. And speaking of which, I was going to say, I love that mindset, but we might as well just roll right into the first section. <laughs> what does your current mindset look like? And if I need to give it a definition, not for you, but for the people listening, that could be anything from you feeling on top of the world or you're questioning some things or procrastination is kicking your butt. What is your current mindset when it comes to your content right now? Um, so honestly, it's kind of all over the place. Um, you know, being in this space of, you know, content creation, you start comparing yourself to other folks mm-hmm. and then you have imposter syndrome and then you get it like all combines into one thing. I will be honest, I've been dealing with both of those things. I, they're kind of in the same vein, but not quite, but I've been dealing with both of those things. But then I have like these moments of extreme um, positivity and hopefulness mm-hmm. because I know in the field of content creation, which I know is extremely broad, but it's more of like you being consistent 
and determined. Agreed. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like just all over the place with with my mindset. Well, you know, it's good that you recognize that and you can like call out, all right, I know I'm in this mindset right now. So maybe I have to step away from this. And like you said, you have those bursts of positivity. I one day we will figure out how to harness it and like just pull at it when we need it. But um, <laughs> I'm glad it still happens. <laughs> well, one thing I did is I stopped drinking coffee because I am a serial coffee, coffee drinker. And I've been it's been exactly a month and I've noticed a difference. Like, oh, I'm not... congratulations. <laughs> like, Thank that's you. huge. I I'm mean, actually drinking coffee right now and it's 11 at night. I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I, I mean, I switched over to tea because I still need my caffeine fix, but I've noticed a difference with like that and just, you know, making sure you're like getting movement in and eating right and things like that. You know, all the, the health things that you should be doing that they tell you to do. That's something that I noticed that really helps with your mindset as well. Gotcha. Wow. I this is the second time today that I've heard that, which means it's I need true. to go start working out again. Yeah, it it's is, true. Oh my God. It could be like the simplest thing of taking a walk. Cause honestly, I haven't been to the gym. I <laughs> have been doing like maybe an hour long walk, like walking around the area where I live and like chilling by the river for like a little bit and like taking mm -hmm. that time to like clear my mind and maybe like read a book or something like that and then like walk back so it could be like the simplest things as that it doesn't have to be like extreme that is true I, and i gotta remember that i did last uh i think it was sunday in the heat of florida i was trying to run I, we have a treadmill and the treadmill didn't want to work so i was Ooh. like i told myself i'm gonna do something physical i'm just gonna go outside and walk and i of course pick the hottest day of the summer to go outside <laughs> but i did it i was like i'm gonna sweat it's gonna feel good i got my podcast i'm just listening to that and music i'm good and yeah. it, it felt good i haven't did it since then but i'm working on it i'm working on it you should try it at least like i don't do it every day i have like a couple of days where i work from home and mm -hmm. if i can if i wake up early enough which i already do i go for a walk before i go streaming or before work starts that's when i do it nice okay that's awesome all right listen everybody out there start working on your walk schedules because <laughs> it helps your mental it helps your mindset i've it heard does. it too many times to like ignore it mm -hmm. that's awesome so okay so this next section we're gonna roll into this is the lessons learned section in this section i asked my guests what lessons have you learned from creating content that you probably couldn't learn from anywhere else or you haven't learned anywhere else in life um i've actually learned a couple of things mm -hmm. one of them yeah a couple of things one of them is being consistent you need to be highly i don't want to say extremely but highly consistent in you know creating your content and putting yourself out there and then also sticking to your schedule that's all you have to be consistent and that's something that i actually struggled with even as a kid because my mom was really mm. lax with me um mm. and not my siblings <laughs> um oh, you were that child got it I, I'm, I'm the baby i have two older siblings i'm the spoiled baby Gotcha. I know. Yep. That's my little sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I learned that consistency is really important in technically all walks of life, not just for content mm -hmm. creation. True. That's actually something I'm still struggling with because I have my moments of like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to do it for, <laughs> I don't know, a month. And I end up doing for like <laughs> two weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, but consistency is very important in uh, content creation and just in life in general. And then also I've learned to be not necessarily tech savvy. I can't think of the exact word, but I'm just going to say tech savvy, you know, being a streamer, whether it be on Twitch, YouTube, Kick, where have you, you're going to have technical problems and you're going to have to figure that stuff out. Exactly. And I come from... Uh, a father, I shouldn't say I come from a father, but my dad was, <laughs> <laughs> my dad was very into technology. I remember building computers with him with the uh, Packer, nice. though, if you remember that. Um, oh my Packer goodness. computers, I remember building those with him and, you know, things like that. And you figured out issues and you have to learn how to be able to troubleshoot 
use Google for whatever issues you have, experiment, mm-hmm. you know, YouTube basically has like almost all of your answers. Exactly. I've learned to be, I guess, tech savvy. And then also, I want to say patient, but I was already a patient person. But I feel like I've learned how to harness that patience when it comes to people online. Because you have some folks that can't catch the hint that you're throwing out to not do something or... Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't know how best to explain it, but I think I've been able to harness my patience a little bit more for all the folks that come from the Internet. If I hear you correctly, you're saying you have more patience with dealing with people, certain people. OK. Ah, yes, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Because my mom, I'm like, no, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I have to like call you in three business days and then maybe I'll speak to you for like 10 minutes or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I feel that. Uh, that's awesome. You know what? I never thought about patience. Like I used to not have patience and I'm going to chalk it up to content creation, especially when you're trying to like build your YouTube page or you first starting on as a streamer and you're streaming to like nobody, oh, like yes. you have to have patience because that's the quickest way for people to quit. And like nothing's happening. It's been two weeks. I'm done. It's like, it's going to take longer than two weeks, buddy. Yes. Side story. When I was streaming with the non-canon crew, there's no, it's like mm-hmm. a cross promotion. Um, yeah, but yeah. when I was streaming with the non-canon crew, we originally started with YouTube and I think Vox originally had the first Twitch page. And then mm-hmm. Sano, the Green Lantern, I think that's what he goes by. He had Facebook streaming. And it was, first of all, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm an introvert by nature. So I'm like, okay, I guess I can, you know, be a part of this and stream, you know, and interact <laughs> with folks. And I'm just like, right? oh my God, I'm gonna die <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> um, but it took us a long time to, you know, build up our, the YouTube page that was well, completely different now, but build up the YouTube page to like what it was. And that came mm-hmm. from like me streaming on the YouTube channel, like we used to play oh. Destiny, we used to play Dragon Ball, I think it was Xenoverse at the time. And then mm-hmm. we, you know, started branching out to other things, but I wasn't getting a lot of folks on to the YouTube page. So I was streaming to technically no one and mm-hmm. not necessarily talking to no one because I was talking to my teammates when we were playing games and whatnot. But right. I feel like that is where I really started to learn patience and kind of consistency of course things change but i think that's Mm -hmm. where i really started to develop those two things and then i was able to apply that to like my instagram because i was growing that a while back and then my own twitch channel and then you know branching out to other things yeah i like that like the early lessons that we learned carry us through the rest of our current and creation journey because it's that stays the same. Like you said, consistency and determination is two huge factors that you're going to need to actually succeed. Mm-hmm. For those who are either starting off with their little content creation journey, or maybe somebody like myself who's been doing it for a while, words of advice, what type of words of advice would you give to someone? You pick the audience and you let them know what you want to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let me see here. I I feel like this can be applied to both, I guess, veteran streamers or content creators, Mm -hmm. and then also new folks coming in. Don't be afraid to experiment. Like, Mm. try new things. Try, I guess, try those trends if you think you, like, if you feel comfortable with it. That's also something really important. Like, don't do something if you're not comfortable with it, because we will know that you are uncomfortable doing whatever you're doing. We can see it in your face. Exactly. Um, Don't, (laughs) don't, but don't be afraid to experiment um, with your content because, you know, something that you may, think that people may not like there may be like eight 20 100 people out there that like that thing 
that you did and will share that with their friends that also like that thing. So don't be afraid to experiment. I am learning that myself. So I guess it's some advice mm. to myself. Same, actually. Yeah, but don't be afraid to experiment with like new content or new technology or new whatever meta threads mm -hmm. X, Thre oh whatever. yeah so much oh now there's an x i forgot about that one uh no to piggyback off what you're saying like experimenting for me like once i embraced it has been coming a lot more fun the reason i started stream oh the original reason i started streaming because i hate scary games and i was like you know what i'm gonna play scary games to get over it that didn't work it mm -hmm. i don't it didn't work um <laughs> Then it turned into, I could do all this technical stuff with my stream and experiment with the lights and channel points and the screen flipping upside, all kinds of stuff like that. And like, yeah, there's a few people, there's more people doing it now, but at the time there wasn't that many people doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't know if this is right or not, but it's fun. I'm gonna go with it. And I've been doing it ever since. So figure mm -hmm. out what you like to do. If it's fun, just pursue it. Exactly. If people see you having fun, they will have fun too. That is 100 percent facts yes <laughs> like except it, only if you're playing a scary game then people will enjoy yourself okay <laughs> that's true that is also true but if i may because you said like why you started streaming uh yeah. i started streaming because i'm an introvert i'm mm -hmm. a homebody i don't go out unless i absolutely have to or i want to go spend money <laughs> At gotcha. the mall or something. That's valid. But I wasn't very good at like talking to people. Like I could, but it was like the most cringy, unsettling thing ever to me. Like I absolutely hated it. I didn't want to like yeah. do it. But I know or I knew that it would benefit me in the future if I got used to that and also being mm. in front of a camera because I also did not like taking pictures. And you would, gotcha. want, you would be like, but Callie, you're a cosplayer. And I'm exactly. like, "Exactly." I know, but I said I started cosplaying in 2020. <laughs> that is true. I <laughs> so, got to put the math together on that. <laughs> so that was th three years ago. That's why I started streaming, because I wanted to get better at talking to people mm -hmm. and then also feel comfortable being in front of a camera. That is a great reason to get started and one i would never have thought of because i too i wouldn't say i'm an introvert but i would say i'd rather stay home and like hang out with the fam or just like in my room by myself but streaming has pulled me out of that shell a little bit like i mm -hmm. actually enjoy talking to my community or mm -hmm. talking to a random person in the comments or something like that so yeah to your point it, it worked yeah you can I think it's a really good way to, you know, get out of your shell and not necessarily develop you, but like get you more comfortable with talking to folks, especially with how the pandemic kind of like shut down everything. Yeah. It's a really good way to slowly work your way into talking, being able to talk to folks and then also being comfortable doing it. I agree. That's perfect words of advice for everybody and including myself. I like that. That's awesome. All right. Before we get to the end of this podcast, I mentioned I wanted to mention this earlier. A creative narrator. Mm -hmm. What does a creative narrator do? Have you played Horizon Hero Dawn, uh, Zero Dawn? Yes. The person that wrote wrote that. So you were fleshing out the whole story for a mm -hmm. game, basically. Yes, that's the simple way of explaining it. Now, it, like depending on like what company you work for and you know it could be a modes full of things but that is what i want to do do you have a dream company in mind so so here's the thing my uh -huh. dream company at the time you're gonna be surprised maybe was blizzard what? you know what it was blizzard okay I, that makes, and I understand why it might not be now. Uh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at first, it was Square Enix because at the time, I'm going to age myself, Final Fantasy VII. I wanted okay. to be on that team to, you know, be in that game. Yes. But then it was Blizzard because of Overwatch. And I'm mm -hmm. kind of digressing a little bit, but my name, Calissa Keynes, is actually a character I created to fit into the Overwatch universe and she has a whole background a, ref a reference sheet she has an entire story that 
I was writing, which is like 32 mm-hmm. chapters, but I stopped because of all the the stuff that started happening with Blizzard. So yeah. I stopped that. So I really, really wanted to like work for Blizzard on the Overwatch team. That's amazing. And I had no idea. <laughs> also 32 chapters? What? Yeah, it's not finished either. Um, it probably will never be finished. I was about to say, I know we're digressing, but <laughs> there's you know, never, that's a lot of, Yep. I am impressed. That is a lot of words. Also, you made an entire character for a game mm-hmm. in the hope, like, that's awesome. Where is it? Does this exist anywhere? On the internet. You know what? I'm gonna, I know how to Google. I'm going to find it. I can maybe show you some commissions that I got of her because I All can't right. draw. So I can probably do that. And if you're That'll looking for like reading material, I can't give you that. That's I feel that you. Will stay in the void. Hey, stay safe there. Got it. <laughs> until it needs to come out. But um, no, I think that's dope. And I hopefully this will reach enough people in the future. You know, somebody be like, you know what? I need a creative narrator on my team and uh, scoop you up because I feel like that is a dope and unique position in the gaming industry and you have the power to write the stories that you want to see which is very important Mm -hmm. hit me up (laughs) yes do it well callie with that we have reached the end of the podcast episode in the part where i like to call call to action because apparently when you make a youtube video you're supposed to put a call to action at the end and i suck at it so i built it into the podcast but because it's my podcast, I'm going to make you go first. Uh, do you have anything, you have a call to action that you would like to tell the people, point them somewhere, direct them in some location? Now is your time. Okay. Well, everybody, first of all, thank you for having me on the podcast. No problem. If you would like to, you know, learn more about me and all the things I get into, definitely follow me. I don't even know if I should call it Twitter. Like, should I call it X? What, what should I, what you know what? I, like, let's just call it Twitter for now. Cause all okay. the old people are going to call it Twitter. So, okay. So you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Calista. Also follow me on Instagram because that is where I post my cosplays. I'm also Jess Calista there too. And then obviously you need to follow me on Twitch. I'm also just close to there too. So make sure you follow me. I'd love to have you in my chat, in my community, just chatting with you in general. I don't bite. I mostly hide, but I don't bite. (laughs) (laughs) That was perfect. Congrats on that. No, I'm going to practice right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you know any other creators out there who would gain any type of information or value from a podcast and these discussions that I'm having, please share the podcast with them. Upload it unfiltered. It's uploaded because you got to upload it to the internet and it's unfiltered because sometimes I say the F word. Anyways, (laughs) you are subscribed on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts. Go ahead and leave me a review because I'm I'm all over the place and we're not stopping anytime soon. So again, Callie, thank you for doing this with me. I had a ton of fun, learned a lot about you, and you dropped a bunch of knowledge. It's going to be helpful to a lot of people out there, so I appreciate your time. Of course. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Again, I uh, appreciate every single one of y'all out there listening to this. If you're a creator, remember, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I will talk to y'all in the next one.